I'm also going to get a towel because my face is itchy. Hello everyone, I'm Kylie. Today I am going to be teaching everyone how to do five different kinds of bangs on yourself. I probably should have done this before quarantine, or during quarantine, I mean, but I grew my bangs out with the intention of just seeing what they looked like without being short. <laughs> I really just miss my bangs. My hair just kind of just sits there, you know? Like, sometimes I'll bring it over this way. Being a hairstylist during a pandemic right now, we have to do our best to not touch our faces and our hair, and if my hair is all the way over, I'm touching it more because it's falling out of place, and I don't like my hair down the middle so that leaves only a few options like using clips in my hair which I don't like to do so that's why we're making this video today to get started I wanted to tell you exactly what you're gonna need today so you're gonna need cutting shears these are my rainbow cutting shears these are Matsui the brand and these are Japanese steel um, and they are anodized metal. You can actually buy cheaper shears at, I think I've seen them at grocery stores. If you go to a Sally Beauty Supply or other kinds of beauty stores, they will have cutting shears that um, are pretty cheap. I use these professionally and they're actually a cheaper brand. Like, majority of cutting shears that my coworkers use range from $500 to $1,000. And these came in a pack of $160 or $170 for this and two other items. It's pretty cheap, but it's pretty good. I also have some thinning shears. These are optional entirely, but if you only have thinning shears or if you only have cutting shears that are straight blade, then it's okay. You can use one or the other or both. The other thing you're going to need is some clips. Okay, like even if you just have bobby pins, that's fine, but anything to clip your hair out of the way while you're doing your bangs. Now you're also going to need a comb. If you have a comb like this, this is fine because you're going to need to section your hair out anyways, but either of these combs or both are great as well. And you're also going to need a blow dryer and hopefully, hopefully you have that because the blow dryer is the best thing to style bangs ever and I am telling you, if you don't blow dry your bangs, you're going to be more frustrated by them than anything else. I've seen so many videos of people online cutting their bangs and then instantly regretting it because they haven't let it settle and they haven't wet it down, they haven't dried it properly, they haven't styled it. They're just looking at their hair. Like if I were to cut my bangs just like this, they would go like this. They would just stick straight out and split right down the middle and it's not gonna look cute obviously so just don't freak out in the beginning don't get emotional about it bangs are scary and i know that but you can do this you can do this you got it all right so now that you have all of your tools you got a thinning shear or cutting shear you've got a comb for separating or combing and then you have a blow dryer and clips pretty simple now you are going to prep your hair by separating slash sectioning out what you're going to be cutting. So here is the rule of thumb. It's actually really simple. You take a comb, you take a pencil, you take anything that's just straight, a ruler, whatever you want. You're going to place this right on your head, right on top, wherever your head kind of lays flat. You have to look right where the comb starts elevating off of the head. So right where that spot is, is where you are going to start your sectioning. And when in doubt, always go a little bit less than a little bit more slash further back. You can always recut later. And especially with bangs, you're going to be trimming them all the time. So you might as well work your way there over a few trims. And you can either create a rainbow shape or a triangle shape. For the most part, this will not really be different for a lot of people, but a good rule to base your decision off of is whether you want really thick bangs or really thin bangs. So a triangle is for thinner bangs or if you have a really narrow forehead. If you have more like um, a point to your forehead, this can be a good shape for fanning out your bangs properly. But if you have a really wide and tall forehead that kind of comes all the way out here or really, really square, or you're just looking for much, much thicker bangs, you're going to want to do a whole rainbow instead of 
a triangle. It's going to want to look more like this than this. Because um, I want thinner bangs today, I'm just going to do somewhat of a triangle. I also forgot that you're going to want to split your hair straight down the middle. Now look at your nose and then look straight up and down in the mirror and then you'll find that spot that you part your hair in. You can either go back all the way to your temples if you have a really wide forehead, but typically I like to stop where my baby hairs get really severe. So you see how like, I, I do have a lot of baby hairs in general, but they're not as bad throughout here, and then they just start to get really obvious. Right here, and right here. So that is where I just stop my section. Just stare at yourself in the mirror a few times and check balance. For me, I've realized that this side is a little wider than the other one. Take some out of it. Oh, and by the way, it is okay if your hair is a little dirty. Your hair does not have to be perfectly clean. In fact, when your hair is too clean, it can end up looking a little too fly away -y. You know when your hair is like really dry because there's no oil in it? It just kind of like does whatever it wants. Dirty hair kind of stays where you put it. Oh, I can tell that there is a storm a brewing outside. There is a gigantic black cloud just floating right towards me right now. It's kind of scary. So now that you are pretty sure you have a good section to start off with, now you're ready to clip everything out of the way. So after you have sectioned your hair out, your next step is to cut the excess length to the tip of your nose. So you know when you see people online, they'll just take their freaking hair and they'll just chop it here and then they'll be like, oh, and it's like just a big round thing that comes this high on their forehead. Don't be that person. You need to be cutting like a centimeter at a time. So the first thing that you should be doing is if your hair is any longer than your nose to start out with, you're going to slide it down until your finger hits the tip of your nose. Now, take whatever is excess right here and just chop it. So now, you should shape them with a blow dryer in order to get them to lay right. So if you want to try this dry, you could try it dry, but I'm going to show you from wet hair just to make it easier because when you're drying wet hair, it ends up creating a cleaner shape. So here's a little trick I learned in the salon. If you spray your comb instead of your forehead, you won't drip water down your face. I learned this the hard way. Basically what you're trying to get wet is your scalp because when you part your hair in the same area for a long period of time, your follicles of your scalp stay in the direction that you've been parting it for so long. If you wet that down and dry it properly, that resets the way it's going to sit. You're going to take your blow dryer and watch the directions I'm going in. You're going to go this way a few times, then this way a few times. Shimmy it down a little bit and then go back and forth. Just go back and forth, back and forth a few times over and over until you get a perfect beveled shape. And if your hair is super curly, thick or frizzy, this is probably going to be a little bit difficult in that case. Use some kind of a brush, a flat brush of any kind, and you're going to do that. Use the brush like this, okay? Um, and using the right amount of products that may tame down your frizz can actually get it pretty smooth. And this will be easier the shorter your bangs get, so you might end up having to blow dry them a few times. I wanted to tell you the different types of cutting. So we're going to be talking about blunt cutting. That's when you're cutting straight across and it creates a really clean straight line. Slide cutting is when you are taking your shears upside down or if you were to pick the hair up and slide cut like this, taking your shear halfway open like this, and you're going to slightly close it as you're gliding your blade across the hair. And this is going to create variations of length that will add control, thinning it out just a little bit and giving it some texture. Now point cutting is a smaller version of slide cutting. Taking the hair at the very tip of it where maybe you already did a blunt cut and you're going to go in vertically and you're going to piece cut it out like this. Piece cutting kind of refers to either point cutting or slide cutting. 
but you could do it at more of a dramatic angle. If you're side sweeping like this, you're going to want to angle it like this. So if you want to side sweep it this way, you're going to want to angle your shears like this. Those are the three ways of cutting and then thinning shears will um, help give your hair a softer edge faster than point cutting or slide cutting and can be used alone but will be slower. Good for an unsure hand. I put my notes up right here so sorry I'm looking over there a lot. We are ready to talk about types of bangs. The first type of bang we're going to be teaching today is the curtain bang. So here's a photo or some photos right here about what we're going to do. This is a really good look for someone who still likes to part their hair. Um, so this is a really, really long fringe. By the way, when I say fringe, I am interchanging the word fringe and bang because they both mean exactly the same thing. Both literally just mean any hair that frames the face that's shorter than the rest of the length. Also, fringe is a... I think a British word or a European version of bangs. But we're gonna do something called over direction. So instead of pulling it down and cutting at an angle like this, take half of your hair, the first half of your hair, you're gonna use a comb and you're going to push it all the way over to the other side. Now you have a point where it should be possibly longer on this side. Alright, so just like this, you see how that angle is kind of like this. You're going to point cut this so that everything is more straight across your fingers. So what this is going to do is when you comb it back down this way, it gives you an angle like this. If your hair is thicker, it's just stiff or it doesn't lay right, that's when you can go in and you can hold it up at that angle and you can slide cut. So here, I'll show you slide cutting. All right, and so then that's gonna feather it out, and then that bang is gonna lay like this. You see how that works? Pretty simple, right? And so this curtain bang will kind of sit around the eye. It could be kind of on the cheek, or you could have it kind of right below the brow. But anything higher than that isn't really a curtain bang. So let's do it on the other side. Bring it all the way over and up. Point, cut, point, cut. If you've already cut to the nose like we did in the beginning, then do your best to maintain this corner that comes all the way over and is the longest piece. So you see how this is just heavier than this side? This is just like chunkier and it doesn't sit as nicely as this one does. So that's why you go in and you, you, can anyone hear that thunder? And then you slide cut. You're going to need pretty sharp shears for this. So if you're using craft scissors or you're using something that just isn't really meant for hair, um, you might not get the best cut out of it or it might just be really difficult. You're going to want to check your lengths. So take it from the outer corner and you're going to pull down and then you're going to bring it to your nose and you're going to check that the tips are exactly the right length, like the same length. And then, you know, if you want to take the inner corner and you want to bring that down, you can check if these are the same length. And then from there, everything in between should line up. There you go. There's curtain bangs. Alright, so the second type of bang is long feathered fringe. So this is going to be pretty much the same exact cut as the curtain bang. So you're going to start off doing the same thing as curtain bangs pretty much, or if it's already a nice enough shape, you don't really have to go there. But then what you're going to do is take everything down the middle like this. Oh, and here's a photo right here of what the curtain, the long, the long fringe is. So you're going to section out like half an inch right from the middle, right from that highest point that you're cutting from, okay? Oh, and another thing I forgot to mention is if your hair is really thick, like if this is a lot of bang because of the amount of hair you have on your head, take a third clip and like this and section that out of the way and then just do the bottom part 
and then bring this down and then cut the excess off of the top. So you're just kind of doing it in two sections. This is going to be a kind of bang that sort of lays right below the brow. The best way to get hair to bevel is to kind of elevate it straight away from your forehead. And I will show you more of the straight across bang that like lays really, really blunt and thick. You wouldn't be elevating for that unless you have a lot of hair. Other than that, like you're just going to be cutting straight across like a, bl a blunt cut. But for this particular cut, we're going to pull it kind of away from the face, covering a few inches above the forehead. So from here, you're going to piece cut a little bit. I prefer to piece cut um, because eventually you're going to want those softer edges anyways. So you might as well not even blunt cut if you don't have a lot to cut. I only really blunt cut if I need to get a lot off. So you can see already we're kind of hitting the bridge of the nose. Now we're going to come up more and we're just going to take a little more off. And like I said before, you're going to want to cut like a centimeter at a time. You never should be cutting more than that after you've already done your nose chop. That sounds so scary. Sometimes, depending on your face shape, if you feel really wide in the face, like really round or something, then this is a good place to stop because this part is more you know, shorter and narrower, and this cuts your face in half, and it brings it in a little bit, you know? Let's say it comes all the way out here. This is cutting off the top of your face and elongating this part of your face. So if you are a long-faced person, then this might not be the look for you. You might want to have a lot more um, straight across bang than this. I feel like more people feel wider than longer. So this is a really flattering look for those people. The other thing you can do is, you know, take this hair on each side and do the over direction I was talking about. So bring this all the way over and you see that disconnection there? Slightly, just slightly chip away at it. Chip, 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 chip. Piece cutting, piece cutting. When we bring this back over, you see how this kind of goes above the eye now? So you're going to take that other side and do the same thing. So bangs are really versatile. Sometimes I feel like people think that be their face shape doesn't work with bangs. It just depends on what kind of bangs you have. I think this is a really nice simple look for someone who's like looking for a quick change. Now that we have these two bangs out of the way, the curtain bang and the longer, uh, so, like the longer fringe, um, now we are going to go into that blunt cut. Typically this cut is really good for like a just super dramatic look. Sometimes I think about it on like just a French girl, like a jet black hair, and then they have that little bob that just kind of comes up on the sides of your jawline, and then you just have this really blunt cut. It's a look. Like it's definitely, I don't know any particular characters in my head, but it's like definitely a movie character or something. So you're gonna basically just cut your hair straight across and this kind of gets kind of scary because you're cutting really close to your eyes. You're gonna make sure your hair, this actually can also work if your hair is a little damp, but I really prefer dry cutting because hair can do weird things. If you want to do the initial cutting wet, that's fine, but dry cutting is just so much more visual. It just stays where it's put. Make sure you comb straight down like this. So you're just gonna snip 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 typically you're, you're gonna lay your comb right against your forehead like this and you're just gonna snip snip in very tiny tiny amounts and every few times that you feel like your hair is kicking to the side too much comb it straight back down and then continue very carefully I'm gonna take this hair into two sections so I can like kind of just focus on it better. I'm also gonna get a towel because my face is itchy. Another thing you can do for more control is slide your closed shears across your hair and comb down like this and then keep your comb there so that when you cut everything just stays in place. And 
keep your mouth closed. So now I've cut right above the brow, so I'm going to take this top section, I'm going to bring it down. Even if this is a blunt cut, I pick up the piece so that I can really see what I'm cutting. But I'll pick this up like that, and you'll see right where you cut last. So you do want to cut a little below that, and then boom. Natural fall is when the hair sits directly against the head wherever it naturally lays. So um, when you're elevating just slightly like this, that's called one finger's depth. It's close enough where if you're just being really careful in your point cutting to soften the edge, you won't have issues with it looking too different. At least you're not just like like bringing it all the way up or something because that's going to give it a really thin edge and it's going to give it a bevel so a bevel is when it kind of curves when you're giving hair at the bottom a bevel that's curving it. this right here is a blunt cut now this could be done at any length this could be a little longer this could be a little shorter this could be all the way up to here and that would be a baby bang or a bitty bang or a oh tiny bang. This is good for someone who really wants to accentuate their super sharp features. So if you have sh sharper lines and stronger lines in a haircut, it will make every other line in your face look more intense. So if you're someone who maybe is older or has wrinkles or has a huge scar that they don't necessarily want to emphasize, sometimes a straight across bang will only like make that worse for you. Um, and you know, these things they're only kind of guidelines like that doesn't mean that if I see someone on the street with wrinkles and a straight across bang that doesn't mean they're ugly that doesn't mean anything's wrong with the way they cut their hair these are just kind of things that I've learned in the industry over time that either help or don't help if you have a really strong jaw if you have a really strong cheekbone then this cut will really help accentuate that too. If you really, really don't like your nose, if your nose is super duper, you know, really sharp looking, this isn't the cut for you either. And again, it emphasizes all the stronger features in your face. Um, so if you really like your features, this is a good cut for you. But my favorite, my absolute favorite, which is my ultimate cut that I will be doing today is the Lydia bang and I'm calling it that because it really shows the look of Lydia Dietz from um, Beetlejuice, a movie by Tim Burton. Um, so that kind of has that like sort of edgy PC-ness. This is like a goth bang, edgy looking, really um, PC and spiky. Um, I think at one point there a really exaggerated version of this was on Zendaya and I really liked that but overall like I've had this cut a few times. I do it all the time on myself. Something wrong with my camera. I'm sick of it and I'm just going to finish this video really quickly on my phone so you also can kind of see the difference between the quality of my phone and my camera. I like my camera but I also like my phone. It's just harder to keep track of videos on my phone. I'm gonna just get started, okay? So let's pretend we already cut all this to the length we need it to be. You know how I was doing the straight across section to separate the fringe? This time we're gonna do a zigzag. There we go, so that is three zigzags right there. Start doing some deep point cuts. I don't want this to be the most exaggerated yet. So if you ever see edges that are too heavy, like for example, I see how heavy this is over here, you can slide cut down. Okay, and so now I think I'm ready to take this piece. Take a whole section like this, straight out. One, two, three. One, two, three. So that's actually only two pieces, but I went one, two, three, one, two, three. Then I feel really heavy on these sides, so we're gonna take this side, 
Bring that up. You might have little tiny things that just don't seem to fit right. Some pieces here keep coming down into the hair. Give it some time, but consider adding that to your hair. Just make sure you make it even. Okay, so you also have to train your hair a little. If anything ever falls in your face, go like this. So you'll slowly start to get used to like what your bangs are doing. Kind of annoying me is the little baby hairs right here on the sides. So I'm gonna like let those baby hairs kind of brush into my face and then I'm gonna pick them up and just add them to it. Let me just go ahead and tell you guys my last few tips. Hair takes up to two weeks to settle. So if your hair has always been pushed back into a ponytail or being parted in a certain area for a long time, it may take up to two weeks for your bangs to actually look decent, okay? So don't freak out in the beginning. It will take time. The best thing you can do right now is to wet it down and style it as soon as you get out of the shower. If you are feeling iffy about the way they look and you're in the middle of cutting them, go into a different room, look in different mirrors with different lighting from different angles, take pictures of your hair from different angles or take a video of you walking through the room. And if you kind of can picture it looking normal in those situations, stop and cut it later if it still bothers you after a few days. Another tip is that if your hair is frizzy, curly, super thick or wiry, everyone's hair is so different. So any of the tips I gave you in this video, you have to take them with your own interpretations added to that because if you know your hair is gonna do something that my hair doesn't do, you have to take that into consideration. Message me on my hair page, Kylie Summers Hair on Instagram. I am literally always checking my DMs for anyone asking advice. If you live in my area, we actually do free bang trims at my salon. The last thing is try products. If your hair is really bleached out like this side and it's too fuzzy looking, try hair wax or um, just a pomade. I think you'll figure it out on your own if you just do some experimentation with your hair. All right. Well, with that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful experience trying this at home. If you try cutting your bangs using my tutorial and you want to show me, just send them to me on Kylie the Jellyfish, Kylie.the.jellyfish on Instagram, and uh, I will like it. I'll see it. I'll say hi. <laughs> so please like this if you enjoyed this video and it helped you out. Comment down below if you have any questions or just let me know how it worked out for you. And uh, please subscribe. I still post videos. I know I don't post them every day like I did in high school, but I try my best to at least upload three times a month. And for someone with a full-time job, that's not bad. So, subscribe. Thank you so much. Bye.